brought a Bible with you. Let's turn over to the book of St. John. Book of St. John. Third chapter. scriptures I want to touch on just briefly. Won't keep you long. St. John 3, 36 verse. We'll back up a couple verses to catch it. Start in at 31. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Many things that we've heard today from our brothers and from the brothers over at the other church that we went to this morning. It's all been good. When it comes out of the Word of God, it's good. I've always believed, let God be true and every man a liar. And that's what I have based my ministry on. That's what I have based my personal life on. Amen. That if I find it in the Word of God, I'm going to follow it. Amen. Whether I get condemned about it, doesn't matter. I'd rather have God's approval than the whole world condemning me. It, that doesn't matter to me. Because I'm going to stand before God and give an account for myself, not somebody else. I will stand with God and give an account and there will be nobody there but Jesus, the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the angels. And the books will be pulled out. And they'll be open. And then there's another book. I want my name in that other book. Hallelujah. And I've often said, as in, they, they, I've had a lot of people say, Hey, preacher, how close are we to the end? I said, I don't know. But I can tell you this, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and partied up. I said, take a look around. You can judge for yourself. I don't have to answer that. The Lord's already given the evidence. We are in the last days. And therefore, things are wicked. And things will get even more wicked. Sometimes I wonder with the warfare that we've been saddled with for the last year and a half, if there's not been more demons released. Yeah. It just goes from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And there seems like there's no wind. Used to, I could babble through something, Brother Bobby. Then I'd have a little peace. There ain't no little peace no more. It's just battle, battle, battle. Well, yes, sure but I want to say this unto you. If we don't stand firm for what this book says, where will the church be? If Paul hadn't stood, he said, I gave place not even for an hour. And he said, I rebuked even old Peter to his face, for he was to be blamed. 
If we don't stand, and I, I know it hurts people sometimes, Brother Bobby, but I want you to understand Jesus didn't come to bring everybody into a little social get-together. He said, I came to bring a sword. Praise you, Lord. And the division started back when he said, let there be light. Yes. And he separated the light from the darkness. And the heavens from the earth. The waters above and the waters below. Tenth chapter of the book of John, I was reading along real good. And all of a sudden I came across and there was a division again because of Jesus. Amen. I'm not afraid of division. The gospel of Jesus Christ, Papa, came into this world to divide people. Yes. Families, moms and dads, children and parents. He came and sent a sword for division. The very people that you love that live in your very house. If you live for Jesus, there will be a division in that home. Because the ones that don't want to live for Jesus will rail against those that do. That's just the way it is. That's the truth of it. I don't like it. No more than I like the fact that something has to die so that something can live in this world. I think on that often. Every time I see a hawk swoop down and grab a mouse, I think of that. Every time I see something grab one of my chickens and kill it, I think of that. Every time I go hunting, I think of that. Every time I put a worm on a line and cast it out, something has to die so that something can live. That comes all the way down even to God himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus had to go to the cross and die so somebody could live. Man. You take one little grain of corn and it abideth alone. And except it fall into the ground and die, it will bring forth no fruit. But if it dies and goes to the ground, it brings forth much fruit. Reckon ye yourselves dead in Christ. Man. Can't live while you live. You have to live as you died. Come on, Keith. You have to die the death before life can come, Brother Bobby. Praise you. That's just how it is. I didn't set it up, but I know God did. And to be born again, first you have to die to self, to the love of the world, to the love of sin, before you can be made alive in Christ. Now we get down to this 36th verse. He that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. That's a division. The dead among the living and the living among the dead. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. We seek not to live after the world. For if you love the world and the things therein, if you love the pride of life and the lust of the flesh, ye shall die. The love of the Father is not in you if the love of the world is in you. Is that not a division? Is there not a division among the believing who are alive and the unbeliever who is dead? There is a division. Some people think everybody's alive in Christ. But I say unto you that that's not the case. 
There's no way a man can be alive in Christ and cut a 13-year-old girl's head off. There's no way that you can abide in life and kick the face off your wife. There's no way that you can be alive in Christ and kill and maim and pillage and rape Amen. and call yourself a child of God. It is not in the book. It's not. So the next part of that 36th verse says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Those that are not under the blood of Jesus Christ, the wrath of God abides upon them. If you look that word wrath up, it means anger, turning away from, indignation, fury. The fury of God is upon the unbeliever. We had a doctrine when I first come into the church that I had to stand and oppose that man could satisfy the wrath of God. And I, I endured that for a very short time and I printed 500 booklets and I scattered them everywhere. If man could satisfy the wrath of God, Jesus came in vain. Amen. The wrath of God was poured out on Jesus Christ at Calvary for the believer. For you that repent, die dead to the love of sin, and are made alive by the blood of Christ, Jesus Christ carried and bore the wrath of God for you. When you stand before God, you will plead that blood. And just as much as the Egyptians were in Egypt, the blood over the doorpost will save your house. Amen. Those that have not that blood of Jesus will die and the wrath of God will be upon you and you will spend eternity paying for the eternal wrath of God because you believe not the testimony of Jesus Christ that He was the Son of God. You'll spend and spend and spend and never fulfill the wrath of God. In this book I read of a man for 2,000 years that begged for just a little bit of water to cool his tongue and to this day, I have not found a place where his fiery tongue was quenched. People don't believe in hell anymore, Brother Bobby. They don't preach the fear of God anymore. They don't preach the wrath of God anymore. If you are just a mere professor and you belong to a social club that just comes together on Sunday to entertain one another and don't preach what's in this book, the wrath of God abides Amen. upon you. Amen. The wrath of God. The true fruits of someone that's been born again is a change from nature to grace that will make a brand new creature out of you. You will love the things you used to hate and hate the things you used to love. You will begin to be Christ-like. It will create a brand new nature yes. within your heart. And you'll know you've passed from death unto life because you love the brethren. Now, I used to make fun of them. But I come to find out when the Lord truly saved me that He set a love for those brethren because they were Christ-like. And they believed in living the truth. Examine yourself to see if you be of the faith. That's what He said. Amen. 
When's the last time you examined yourself? I try to do it pretty regular, Brother Bob. And when I come short, I do what Brother Bobby said. I repent. Find me a little place and say, God, I'm short in an area here. Would you help me to get where I need to be? Because I don't want to be lost. I don't want the wrath of God abiding upon me. But I want to be full of the joy of the Lord. And to walk with God. Yes. I'm going to say this, and this will be what I finish with. The last time the world was destroyed, Brother Bobby, there were eight souls saved, yet so as by water. If it's destroyed this time and only eight are left, I want to be one of the eight. So I challenge you this afternoon, live your life so that if there's only eight saved, you'll be one of the eight. That's how I want to live my life. I'm like Brother Bobby, I'm sick in body. Only 63, but I'm wore out. Them 100-hour weeks get to you, don't they? But I want to run the last leg of my race so that I might obtain the prize. How do I want to run? With patience. Number two, I want to run so as to obtain. Many run in a race, but only one wins the prize. Run so that you may obtain what you're looking for with that crown of life. You run with patience, run so as to obtain, and run to the end of the finish line. The old writer said, you did run well. Who hath hindered you? Satan's got him on every corner for us, Brother Bobby, to hinder us. I don't take offense to a brother or sister that's hindered because I know the hindrance has hindered me at times. Run with patience. Don't get ahead of God. Wait on Him. I get faulted a lot for waiting on God. But he that waiteth upon the Lord shall renew his strength. Hallelujah. I want to wait on God. I don't want to ever get back ahead of God. I've been there. Amen. You're a setting duck for Satan when you're out ahead of God. Yes. Wait on God in everything. Run so as to obtain and run to the end. Fight a good fight. Finish your course. Henceforth there's laid up for me yeah, boy. a crown of life. And not me only, but for all of them. Think about that. Not just me. Not just Paul. But for everyone that's got that hope put right there in a sure place with Jesus. Yeah, everyone that's run with patience. Amen. That's run to obtain and run to the end. Come on, Keith. There's a promise given unto you and you'll hear the voice of God say, Enter in thou good and faithful servant. Not that you've been faithful over a lot because I sure ain't. But you've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. It's not by my faithfulness, Brother Bobby, but it's because Jesus is faithful. Yes, Lord. That's my assurance right there. Somebody said, how do you know? Because his spirit bears witness with my spirit oh, yeah. that I have what I say I got. Amen. And my life proves that I got what I got. Yes. And so I'm resting in hope. And for one of these days, I'll hear the trumpet sound. voice of the archangel Praise you, Lord. and the dead in Christ shall raise first and we which remain shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye Amen. and there we will be raptured to that cloud 
there to ever be with Him. That's what we're striving for. God bless you. If you're an unbeliever, the wrath of God abides upon you. And the only name that I know to roll that wrath of God off is the man that went to Calvary whose name is Jesus Christ. I love you. I pray that you find Jesus. And everybody said,